When Sobel contacted me to see if I wanted to try out their SV01 Pro 3D printer, I have to admit, I didn't know much about it. I assumed it was just another one of those N3 clones that doesn't quite measure up. As soon as I started looking at the specification though, I started to get interested. You can check out all of the boring specs for yourself, but the headlines are that this is a direct drive, large bed, touchscreen 3D printer for under $300. That's crazy. I thought that for this low price, they must have used some really cheap parts or saved some money somewhere else. And I agreed to check it out so that if nothing else, I could point and laugh and show you all how it shouldn't be done. What I found though, couldn't be further from that conclusion. Is it perfect? No. What the SV01 Pro is though, is a 3D printer that almost completely maximizes the efficient use of all its components with an excellent user interface. As I said, Sobel sent me this machine for free to review. However, as with all of my reviews, they have absolutely no say in the video and all of the opinions are my own. If by the end of this video, you'd like to buy one for yourself, then Sobel are offering you, my viewers, a discount if you use the link and the code in the description below. All that being said, this is a fantastic 3D printer. Let me show you why. Firstly, to judge the value of this machine, you need to look at its competition. The Creality Ender 3S1 is similar in spec. Its direct drive has a flexible bed, has dual lead screws, a bed probe, and a 32-bit mainboard. The Sobel offering has a larger build volume though, with 280 by 240 by 300 millimeter dimensions, with the Ender 3 only having 220 by 220 by 270 millimeter dimensions. To visualize what that actually looks like, this is the Ender 3 bed on the Sobels. So on paper, it's a little bit better, but going by each manufacturer's website, the SV01 Pro is $90 cheaper before the discount. That's not the end of the story either. The SV01 Pro has a few other little tricks up its sleeve that make it a much better option than the Creality machine, in my opinion. We'll get to those in a minute though, so stick around. So the Soval SV01 Pro appears to be great value when you read the specs. However, figures on paper are completely worthless if the machine can't actually do what the marketing material says it can. The first challenge you have to overcome with a 3D printer is putting it together. Only the smallest units come pre-assembled, so there's always something you need to do. The SV01 Pro is supplied with the gantry frame and the base connected by wiring, so you just need to be a little bit careful as you take it out of the packaging. But you can then just slot the frame over the base and insert four screws from the side. There's no scrabbling around underneath like there is on some other machines, and there are no belts or major assemblies to attach. The frame auto aligns because of these clever milled sections in the base, so you can't really get it wrong. There are a couple of obvious plugs and items to clip on, but everything is covered in the manual, including selecting the correct voltage for your supply. I did need to tighten the X and Y axis belt slightly, which isn't covered in the setup part of the manual, but it is covered later on in the maintenance section. The manual also gives a mainboard layout as well as some great information on troubleshooting. This is much more than you normally get and should be really useful to somebody new to 3D printing. All in all, it only takes about 10 minutes from opening the box to switching on your 3D printer, which is about as fast as the fastest to set up 3D printer I've found so far. Once powered up, you're greeted with a full color touchscreen display. Whether you like the look of the optional day or night colour modes will be down to personal preference, but I'm more interested in functionality. With many 3D printers that have a touchscreen, there are firmware compromises made to get them to work fully. For instance, on my Ender 3 S1 Pro, you can't use the M600 GCO command to do a mid-print filament change. There's no linear advance function, as well as a few other quirks that you have to find a workaround for. Some users who don't want to compromise actually ditch the touchscreens altogether in favour of better supported screens with a manual button. This is not the case with the SV01 Pro screen though. The user interface is simple and well thought out. All of the key functions are right there on the main screen and there's only ever a couple of touches to get what you want. Sobel have also fully supported the M600 filament change option, which I tested in a pretty dramatic way with this full bed dual colour chainmail file. This print is incredibly complex with thousands of tiny details. The SV handled it well though, and most importantly, the color change worked faultlessly. Unlike other touchscreens, I can't fault the SV01 Pro's interface. It has everything you need and nothing that you don't. It's intuitive and prioritizes all of the most used features. After tramming the bed and creating a bed mesh, I was actually ready to start printing. Sobel have also configured their firmware so you don't need to worry about messing around with your start code in your slicer, it will use the bed mesh that you create automatically with no changes. I started as usual by printing a couple of the models that come supplied on the SD card. These went fine as you'd expect. They stick to the bed incredibly well as usual with these PC type surfaces. I've used these beds on printers before and they do work very well when they're new. Unfortunately, they can be quite easy to damage and many new users will inadvertently gouge grooves with an incorrect Z offset or slice through them trying to remove a stubborn print. As the Sobel's bed surface is magnetic and only held on by a magnetic backing, you shouldn't have any problem removing the most well-stuck prints once they've cooled. 
This should be easy to replace or even upgrade to a PEI bed should you want something a little tougher later on. When it came to wanting to print something of my own, I had to check out slicer options. If you don't know, whenever you want to take a model file and print it, you need to slice it first using software. This software is unimaginatively called slicing software, and you have a few options. Thankfully, Sobel haven't tried to reinvent the wheel here and simply point you towards Cura, one of the most popular and free options. They include an older version of Cura on the supplied SD card, but you're better off just downloading the most recent version from the internet. Once you have Cura installed, you'll find a default profile for the Sobel SV01, but not the Pro yet, depending when you watch this video. The good news is that the Pro is similar enough to the SV01 that you can just use the same profile and rename it if you want to. The only thing that may want tweaking is the retraction distance. By default, it's set to three millimeters, which is quite high for a direct drive printer. It's fine to start with though, and I just use the default profile to print a Benchy calibration cube and a few other things. I have a Beagle camera that I use to print remotely, and this connected up with no issues for full control. I obviously printed the large chainmail file that I showed you earlier, but then I also use flexible TPU as well as PETG. All of these printed great, as you'd expect. I've actually had no print quality issues at all with the materials I've tried with the Sobel as it comes out of the box. Like with all printers, there will be some marginal gains by tweaking a few settings here and there, but I don't see anything glaringly obvious that needs fixing. You may have heard me mention Linear Advance. This is a feature that's available in Marlin, the open source firmware that many 3D printer manufacturers configure and use as their own. To explain what it does would take a video on its own, but in basic terms, it modulates the way the extruder pushes the filament out to account for pressure restrictions that come from pushing melted filament through a small hole. Without it, you can get bulges on corners where the printer wants the filament to stop being extruded, but a little more still comes out because of a buildup in pressure. Creality are known for not activating this feature in their firmware, and I've read that it's to do with stepper driver compatibility. However, when I opened the base, I found that Sobel are using the exact same mainboard that most Ender 3s are now shipping with, without linear advance activated. I was interested to see if I could see any quality differences between a machine with and without linear advance, so I decided to back to back the Sobel SV10 Pro with a Creality Ender 3 S1 Pro. The S1 Pro is the Creality Ender 3 S1's big brother and it has a few extra features, but for the sake of what we're testing, they're basically the same spec. I sliced a simple calibration cube with as close to identical settings as possible and then started each print at the same time. I asked for the same print speed, the same infill, as well as using the same filament from the same roll. The Sobel warmed up about 15 seconds faster, which is surprising considering it has a bigger bed to heat. And the print took a full three minutes less to complete on the Sobel SV01 Pro. That's more than 10% faster. When you look at quality, you wouldn't say that the SV is lacking anywhere either, and in some cases it's clearly better. There is a little bulging still on corners, but at least with linear advance activated, I'll be able to tune this out with some calibration. Let's just remember that the machine that the SV01 Pro is making look a little bit silly here is $200 more expensive. So it's probably clear that I like this printer, but as I said at the beginning, it's not perfect. My main gripe is that the dual lead screws are not connected by a belt. Yes, any time that the Z stepper motors are powered, then they can't go out of sync and less force. But when the motors aren't powered, it can actually happen pretty easily. If these two motors ever do go out of sync, then your Y-axis will no longer be parallel to your bed. This was the main problem that I had with my Creality CR10S Pro. I was constantly having to re-level that printer until I locked the two lead screws with a belt, and then the problem went away. Creality have been linking the lead screws in all of their Dual Z models recently, and it really helps to keep a consistent bed level. To get around this issue in testing, I've printed a couple of spacers which I can use to align the X-axis gantry anytime the printer's turned off, or I disable the steppers in the menu. This is time consuming though, and the parts to fix it are not expensive. I spoke to Sobel and they said that they hadn't had this issue reported back to them before, but were very interested in my suggestion of how to cure this potential frustration for a new user. Hopefully they'll make a kit available or even look to supply new units with a belt installed. Watch this space. Another potential area for improvement is the hot end. Sobel have used their own design of heat break, which means that upgrading to something like a bimetal one is not an option with off the shelf parts. If the SV did ship with this slightly more expensive heat break, then it could genuinely compete with models like the Ender 3 S1 Pro, which is able to print at higher temperatures. The only thing that's really stopping that at the moment is the PTFE liner in the hot end that can't go over 260 degrees. Also, even though there is a section of PTFE tubing through the hot end, it doesn't extend all the way up to the extruder. 
Instead, there's a drilled metal section. It seems to work fine, but I don't really fancy cleaning out a clog if it was to happen in this metal section. Considering all it could take is a slow retraction of filament through this area for it to clog, I could see it happening to some people relatively easily. The SV01 Pro also only has a single extruder gear, which could cause a lack of traction or filament during some prints. I am talking about potential problems that I've seen on other similar designs though. The SV1 Pro has given me no issues at all. I could also highlight a couple of other potential areas for issues like the bed wiring looking a little bit fragile and the extruder lever being a bit wobbly, but I really am looking for problems here rather than having any evidence of issues. When we look inside the base, we can see some nice reassuring signs of intelligent assembly with ferrules on all wires instead of potentially dangerous soldered wire ends clamped in screw terminals. It's also obvious when we look a little closer at some of the components here that there's a heavy Creality presence. Many of the electronic components around the printer are Creality made. It seems to me that what Sobel have done with the SV01 Pro is take some of the tried and tested components from Creality, mixed in some of their own clever firmware configuration and cost saving design, and ended up with a machine that appears to be worth more than the sum of all of its parts. To do all of this at a much lower price just blows my mind a little bit. So let's condense all of my ramblings into some pros and cons. As you can probably imagine, it's a little bit of a lopsided list. For the pros, we have quick, easy setup, a large flexible print bed, bed probe, direct drive, a great intuitive touchscreen, and excellent firmware understanding and configuration. Owning a number of Creality machines, I've become used to finding ways around their firmware quirks but Sovo have shown with the same components that there's no need for compromise. We have full M600 support for mid-print filament changes and linear advanced enabled. When it comes to the cons, there are only really a couple of minor gripes. The Z-axis lead screws could go out of sync without a belt and the bed surface is gonna wear out eventually. Mine is already marked from printing with silk PLA, not that it affects its operation at all, it just makes it look a little bit messy. The hot end design isn't perfect and a few bits look a little fragile, but if these compromises are all that are needed to get all of the benefits at this low price, then I think it's worth it. I really like the way that Sovol have approached the design, manufacture and assembly of this 3D printer. What Sovol have managed to do is redesign a few key components like the hot end and extruder assembly, which results in big cost savings without really losing much in the way of functionality. The added build volume also helps this model stand out in what is a very saturated market of Ender 3 clones. There are a lot of lessons that a bigger manufacturer like Creality could learn here. In the meantime, we have the Sovol SV01 Pro as a great example of a well-designed, manufactured and assembled mid-range 3D printer that will satisfy the needs of complete beginners all the way to seasoned pros. I have plans to make a few small mods to try and iron out some of the creases on the SV01 Pro, so hit subscribe if you don't want to miss out. Remember, if you want to buy one of these, grab yourself a discount by using the link and the code in the description below. If you'd like to see another one of my 3D printer reviews, then click here, or click here for another video you might like. Thanks for watching.